Hello guys, what is going on? I am Nozda and welcome back to another book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing Death Cure. Uh, quickly before we get into the video, if you're wondering what shirt I'm wearing, I am wearing, uh, wearing, I am wearing a, uh, there you go, I am wearing a, uh, Taylor Free Brothers, uh, Deathly Hallows Harry Potter shirts from, uh, QWERTY. QWERTY is a very good website, obviously not sponsored because I have four subscribers, but amazing nonetheless. Anyway, so now I'm going to read the blurb as I usually do, and yeah, let's get started. The trials are over, Wicked is planning to restore the survivors' memories and complete the final cure for the flare, but Thomas has already remembered more than they think, and he knows Wicked can't be trusted. The time for lies is over, but the truth is more dangerous than Thomas could ever imagine. Will any survive the death cure? So, essentially, I hated this book more than the first one, which is weird. I, I, I always thought this, um, that it would... Um, like, and uh, it would go, like, first, third, second, as in, like, from worst to best. But no, it goes third, first, second. I always knew the second one was going to be the best one, because it was just, like, an actual okay book, honestly. It didn't really fix what happened, many of the things that, that offered in the first book, but it did, like, add new stuff. So there's new characters, like Brenda and George, um, that were just all around better. I mean, in this book as well, them two characters specifically uh, were really good, and I enjoyed them a lot, but... Overall, nothing was really fixed in this book. Uh, specifically, the protagonist is even more annoying. The thing is, right, it's obviously obvious that he's supposed to hate Wicked. I mean, they do do some pretty terrible stuff, like, you know, make kids might like, live in this maze or whatever. But I root for them this entire story. Like, ever since, like, halfway through Scott's trials, I've been like, I've been like, yeah, just, just do what they say. You do whatever they want, because if they can cure, like, I know a lot of them, a lot of people have already died, let's say, three billion people, but they, like, basically, basically torture, like, 500 kids to save three billion people. Honestly, that's, like, worth the trade, you know? And in this one specifically, I'm not going to go into uh, like any major spoilers, but it ends up coming down to Thomas having to make one sacrifice. And even if he's not 100% convinced that they're telling the truth, even though like they, uh, you'd like to think they are, um, because right, no one is evil for the sake of being evil. No one n thinks that they're evil. They think they're doing what's right. Okay, so. You, you just think, like, they wouldn't be doing this unless what they knew was right. And considering they have all the entire resources in the world, have all the trust of the people in the world, you just kind of you just kind of go with it at that point, honestly. And the fact that he's thinking for, for himself, I mean, obviously it's, like, instinct and stuff like that, but the fact that he's thinking for himself, he's still, like, three and a half billion people, well, potentially saving three and a half billion people, I should say, it's just... It makes him probably the most unlikable protagonist I've ever seen, or I mean, ever read in the story. And that's why, that's the core, I've always talked about it, that is the core reason why I hate this series. Some of the characters are great. I mean, they just chucked Teresa off to the side in the second and third book. In the first book, she actually had, like, something going, like, she actually had a personality and stuff like that. In the second and third, like... Half a personality is a fake, and the other half, like, it's just not real. Oh, that was the same thing. But you know what I mean? Like, the, the third one, she barely gets any lines at all. It's like you never see her, and when you do, it's like, by by what I mean, not not real, is in like, there's just nothing, nothing like, of phrases, nothing words, you know? They don't mean anything. It's just sentences like, okay, yeah, sure, we'll do that. You know, them types of sentences. No meaningful ones. While in the second one, there was a bunch of meaningful sentences, but they were all, like, actually fake. Like, there was all, like, a stage, a stage acts, you know what I mean? So, truthfully, we never got to explore Teresa at all. Um, but Brenda and George, Brenda especially, Brenda was the only fleshed out character apart from maybe newt newt towards the end of this book was fleshed out which i actually thought i was actually grateful for but other than that seriously um brenda was probably the only fleshed out character in this entire series and she 
wasn't even like a secondary character. She was like a tertiary one. Like obviously towards the end of this, she like she got stepped up in the ranks, but like especially in, like the second one, she, uh, you had the impression that she was like a tertiary character that was just there for like a certain part of the book. Obviously, she stuck around until the very end. Um, but yeah, that's just it's just the character development was shocking. Honestly, it felt the author's main priority was the concept, like the the flair, wicked. That was his pr primary, like, that's what he thought about, like, when writing this book. He literally couldn't care less about the characters. That is my opinion. Right. You can, I've always, I was also thinking about this, like, I'm thinking, like, what am I going to say during this review? Um, oh, I was thinking, like, oh, like, he hasn't really talked about many of the characters' motivations, why they've done what they've done. But thinking about it, like, sometimes, they would, it would give, like, maybe a paragraph telling people, like... Just a bit of backstory, and then that sets up why they act in a certain way, um, in a different part of the book. But I can't really explain it. It just feels like it's not enough. It feels like he's had to like put that paragraph in so we can do something later. It's not like oh, it's like naturally building the character. It's like it's, it's, it just feels like it, not molding, just placing stuff and hoping it sticks, and hoping the reader goes, oh, that's why that happened. You know what I mean? It it felt incredibly lazy, like describe taking pages upon pages describing, um, talking about how Thomas felt about the situation, and rather than getting like characters' reactions and actual conversations that meant something, you know. But yeah, what you gotta do. So I talked uh, briefly about uh, Brenda and the ending. Ending was incredibly weak, of course. Um, it, like when when you've got so much action going out for the going on through the book, and then it ends like that. Uh, very cheesy, um, the character deaths that didn't need to happen because um, they weren't fleshed out enough to care about in the first place. Not going to spoil who, but my, seriously, I couldn't care less about what happened to them characters, even though it's supposed to be like, oh, I should care, but I, I just didn't at all. Um, and the thing is, I know a lot of people like these like these series. I know a lot of a lot of people like the like the books, but I don't understand why. I genuinely can't understand why. Um, and the ending suits the suits the series. Just a weak series and a weak ending, honestly. Um, the only thing that I can say is a positive about this series is that the books are very easy to read. Short chapters, um, big font size, um, three hundred pages each. They're all relatively the same size. I think the first one's three hundred and sixty. Pages, second one's 340, and this one's 325 or something like that. Um, so, you know, very short books. You can read them in a day if you want. Um, I've, I've read, like, all three of them. Like, on average, probably take me, like, four or five days each to read. Just got I usually just read them at night. Um, yeah, so very easy to read. That's the primary reason why I've read them is because, oh, I, I read a book. Don't really want to think too much. Maybe want to get a bit annoyed at, like, bad writing. And there you have it, you know, it was another cash in on the back of, a hung, hung, of the Hunger Games. Um, so yeah, I'm um, glad you enjoyed this rant, I guess. Thank you guys for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, in fact, what the hell am I doing? I need to actually pick a book that I'm going to be reading for next week. Okay, back in a sec. Uh, right, okay, so I'm editing this video now about like uh, a week and a half after I recorded it. I've changed things around. I didn't realize how soon um, certain books would be coming out, but over the next month or so, I'm going to be basically reading all brand new books, all books that are either self-published. I think I'm pretty sure almost all of them are self-published. I really want to try and really shed a spotlight on books that are self-published because it's books that um, either they didn't know how or they weren't able to get a publisher. So I really want to look on them and like focus and see if they can find like diamonds in the rough and stuff like that even though it's not really like a rough thing to be self-published it's like a really common thing nowadays especially people who don't really have much knowledge about the industry or anything like that so that's what i really want to do anyway this book is going to be the collapsing empire it is a brand new series uh from an author i think he's called john uh Scalcy or something like that if i can just get on my tbr real quick here i've got a tbr of about eight or nine books um and a schedule that's going to be is it's filled to the brim. There's going to be about two books a week, um, every Wednesday and Saturday, unless I have something like 
Um, no, I don't want that. Unless I have something, oh yeah, I do. Unless I have something like super important that I want to do on a Saturday or something like that, like maybe like another um, review, like the, like probably Guardians of the Galaxy 2 will probably be on here. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's a, yeah, Scalzi, uh, John Scalzi, it's a sci fi book, it's uh, 336 pages, it's coming out 23rd of the 3rd 17, so that is uh, tomorrow, yeah, it's tomorrow, um, and that's going to be reviewed on Saturday, um, and yeah, so I've got a shadow, uh, a shadow, a uh, schedule. That literally, I am going to be reading two books a week up until midway for April. So yeah, so like over the next, so over the next couple of weeks, three or four, three weeks, I think actually, um, I'm going to be reading brand new books. And then once all the brand new books die down, of the books that I really want to read, like these books have been looking out for like the past month and have been like, oh, this sounds really good. I'm then going to be going to a older series and reading all of them before the final, I think it's the final book in that series comes out. I'm not going to say anything about that now, but anyway, The Class of the Empire, make sure to get it for Saturday. Um, yeah, like, uh, if you're really into this um, whole, like, reading every week, then it might be a bit tough because I'm going to be reading two books a week, which is something that a lot of people don't do, um, especially if they do other stuff, so yeah. Um, but that's going to be it for now. Uh, sorry if the audio might be a bit out, but... Um, yeah, I'm just sort of rushing this, honestly, because uh, I, I didn't realise that I said um, To Kill a Mockingbird. Mockingbird? I, I think that's the book I was supposed to be reading. Um, I, I forgot that I said that at the end of this, and I was just editing, and I'm like, oh my god! Anyway, uh, my hair is, like, completely messed up as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, hopefully enjoyed, and yeah, I'll just see you in the next one. The Cops and Empire. Make sure to get it.